Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Dark Match. We are here to talk about the week in WWE programming. I am, I, as always, am your host, No Leaf Clover, and joining me are... I'm Duos Angel. I'm Lone Warrior. And I am your foxy friend, Backlash. And once again, it's time for What is Iron Sheik Tweeting Now? <clears throat> Ultimate Warrior, you speak with my agent, Paige Magin, and set up a match with me, you and Kevin Nash, so we can fuck your ass, make you humble. The fuck is his yeah, mom with Ultimate <laughs> What is Ultimate Ar- Warrior? It's Iron Ultimate Sheik in 2012. It's Ultimate <laughs> Warrior. Do you need an excuse? I've rambled on that man for far too long than it's worth. I think we just need to accept that uh, Sheiky has his people he doesn't like. He doesn't like Hogan. He doesn't like Warrior. He probably he doesn't like uh, the Virgil. <laughs> Yeah, she's got she's got some anger management issues. He needs to he needs to deal with those. <laughs> Are you kidding? Are you kidding? If he does that, we're out of material. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're out of crazy people, <laughs> which would be a shame. At any rate, uh, we're gonna kick off the proceedings by talking about Monday Night Raw. So uh, we open up and we uh, see a uh, little high for <laughs> Punk and Diggler, and then we see the highlights from the Kane and Cena segment last week. And then uh, we open the show with John Cena. And what a way to kick off the new year. Same as the old fucking year. Same old shit. Is, Same is old anyone kind of. Really what- is. <laughs> is is anyone kind of annoyed that the WWE title match just gets a minor mention at, at the beginning of the show, and the one thing they really want to get over is that Cena is feuding with Kane? Yeah, what? but I, I also have a problem with it not being the main event. <laughs> I mean, I know Cena is a big deal in your company, but he's feuding with fucking Kane. Yeah, and even if it's spiffy, uh, a spiffy quote unquote new Kane. It's still fucking Kane. Yep. He'll be he'll be a face within a month. And then I want a nostalgia high right out. now. <laughs> this is the only Kane I've ever known. <laughs> <laughs> Old Kane kind of sucked balls. <laughs> that was yeah. So I fuck all of you. This is awesome. But yes, so, the, it shouldn't still be more important than the championship. Yeah, so Cena comes out and he makes some, uh, he basically makes some jokey resolutions, like, he's gonna wear less underwear, he's gonna keep his father off of TV, off of WWE programming. When was the last time John Cena Sr. was on TV? It was This Is Your Life. John Cena, This Is Your Life, and honestly, that was kind of a fucked up joke. (laughs) Hey, I liked it just because I was actually there, and it was funny, and I got to see Mick Foley. (laughs) And then uh, we, of course, have to get our obligatory once-a-fucking-week reminder that, in case you didn't know, John Cena and The Rock are going to have a match at WrestleMania. You know, in case they're mentioning it three million times since they booked the shit wasn't enough. I suspect that they'll fucking be reminding us about this match after the match has already happened. Am I I the only one who... Go ahead, Jess. Oh, I was just going to say that I'm really beginning to not give a shit about this match. That's because actually <laughs> what I was about to say is could they've overblown this so much. There's just I don't care. You know, and the match is going to come and it better be fucking amazing. It better be the best wrestling I've ever seen in my life at this point. You know, a I, year of hype. <laughs> you know, for as much as this has been hyped, I feel like when it comes around that there can't be a winner. I, what I mean is like, I, I, I really don't know how, how else to say this, but I get the sneaking suspicion that when this match actually happens, it's going to end in a DQ. 
Or go to no, a new it's contest. Still it's still a sad Cena, pass. It's still like, in with Cena winning. No, the... <laughs> It'll either end with Cena winning or Brock will win, and then they'll have to have a return match at SummerSlam, and we'll have to deal with another, an extra six months of this shit. Either well, goddamn it, way, it's not it, gonna. No, be. They, they're in love with this so much. They're, they're gonna have it be. It's gonna go to a no contest, double count out or something, and the next night on Raw, I was like, "See you next year." Okay. Ah! It's it's the <laughs> problem. I it's the problem. I said. The, when they first booked the match, it's like no one real. Even if Cena wins, he doesn't really win because he doesn't need the rub of beating The Rock. He he's beaten enough people that it's like it's not that big a deal. And The Rock doesn't really need to wrestle. And then they completely blew their load because it'd be one thing if it was the first match that The Rock had back, but they had him show up and wrestle at Survivor Series. So now it's not even nostalgia high of finally seeing the rock back in the ring. It's just like, oh, it's another fucking match. The only way that this could work, especially with the Cena win, is they're gonna have to just fucking have Cena lose for like a month. Just the entire build the rest to this match should be Cena losing horribly. <laughs> I, I know that something similar. I know that something similar was um, was brought up back when this was booked. That you know Cena should lose the title so he can have something to fight for, and that's what it should be. Is that this should have Cena being fucking desperate for a win, especially this. You know, it should be at a point where losing here could just destroy him. Because that'd be good. To He's not going to have an existential crisis because he lost to The Rock. I don't know. Well, it, this is what... It's, okay, we have to get off of this, but it's a triggering kind of thing. It, you, you build and you build and you build and you build, and then it's just that one last fucking thing, and you're just broken. No, they're they're, they're going to keep doing the same thing that they all, that they always do with Cena. He's always going to win. He's always going to be upbeat and happy, even if he doesn't win. There's this match is going to happen no matter what the outcome. Nothing will come of this. It'll be a match. It'll hopefully be a good match, but that'll be it. Mm. Yeah. So at any rate, uh, Cena says one thing won't change in 2012. And that he will remain who he is, and his convictions are true. Eh. Basically, what did I just say every every time they tr- basically what this problem is every time they try and fool us into thinking that they're gonna add an extra dimension to to Cena's character, they're like derp to do, we fooled you. I am I the only one? Oh, I suppose we'll get to it later. We can save this for the end of the show, but... Well, Cena says that Kane wants him to turn his back on the fans, but he's not going to do that ever, and uh, he's going to start the year by doing, like he does every year, I guess, by thanking the fucking fans. Oh, God damn it. I know Vince likes white hats, but fucking seriously, can Cena grow some balls? Please... Oh, I, 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 would, I don't even want him to turn heel. I don't even want him to turn heel. All I want him to do is just one night come out and say, you know what? Fuck you. I bust my ass. I break my neck. I'm constantly injured. Fuck you if you don't like me. I love the people that do like me, but if you don't like me, fuck you. It's not all I fucking want. He has said that, though. No, he hasn't. He hasn't gotten pissed off about it, no, but he, his entire attitude up to this point has been, you love me, you love me, you hate me, you hate me. You don't have to go through life being pissed off at the haters. As someone who could give less than a shit about anyone who doesn't like me, sometimes you just gotta let it fucking go. But the thing is, that that is a healthy way to go through life is to just ignore the people that hate you. Well, that might be that might be a healthy way to go through life, but it doesn't make for compelling television. Yeah, it doesn't make. Well, that's why they have other things like him being stalked by the fucking devil. Apparently, here, 
I can just summarize this in one word. I'm never gonna turn bad, Kane. Yeah, you are. Yeah. That was more than one word. I said summarize. Was... I might have... You said it's summarize not... one word. Shit, really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is gonna be a long night. It really is. Uh, uh, so, and... so Kane's Kane... music hits and he tells Cena to embrace the hate. <laughs> and Cena and Kane laughs maniacally and his pyro goes off and Kane is laughing and Cena looks terrified and it's just so fucking silly. You <laughs> What? What do you do? It's fucking wrestling, of course it's silly. This well, entire... it's sillier than usual. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. It's wrestling. I love it. I have for, you know, I have for a while now. But it's always going to be goofy as shit. Always. And you know what? That's okay. That's just kind of how professional wrestling is. It's kind of goofy. They run with that. They embrace that. This is why it's enjoyable. This is why I can... Nah. <sighs> At Never any rate, uh, Cole and Lawler hype up Punk and Ziggler, and we get our last and final It Begins right. promo. Dun, dun, dun. And um, we, come back from, when we come back from commercial. Uh, our first match of the night is Daniel Bryan versus Cody Rhodes. I think this is further proving that, um, in case, you know, it wasn't obvious, the freaking draft, mo- well, no, it is the Super Show. Damn. Yes. Yeah. I was going to say, the, dra- the draft, if it wasn't already dead, it's fucking dead. It pretty much is I mean, dead. I mean, the brand extension still exists. I guess just they just want the SmackDown people on Raw, so it'll help the continue to help the ratings. If the ratings go up, I'll be surprised if they keep doing this, but, you know, yeah. never know. There you right. Uh, Brian versus Rhodes. Uh, good match. It's, did you expect anything else? These people would have a bad match? Well, no, but I, I have a couple things to say about the ending, namely Brian getting the Kelly Kelly victory, as I like to call it. Hmm. Well, I don't have a problem with it because I know, I, I kind of know where they want to go with it. They they are basically turning Brian into a tool. Yeah, they're, they're turning him into Miz 2.0. Well, no, I don't think they're turning him into the Miz. No, they are. Just, we'll, we'll talk more about it when we get to SmackDown, but that's really wh- how it's coming off to me. Mm, honestly, if I were to make a comparison, I'd say it's closer to Christian. Yeah, I, I don't think he's. I don't think he's becoming Miz. I think he's just being a tool. But we'll get to that when we go to to. Uh, when we yeah, get to we'll, we'll save that for later. But uh, after the match, and Brian celebrates, and he's he's going with the rant, screaming, "Yes, yes, yes, yes!" The entire way, They're turning him into such a tool. I love it. Uh, we cut backstage and. Johnny Laurinaitis, uh, he's taking it to Vice President of Talent Relations, the interim general manager, one in Raw. He's backstage texting, and Miz walks in, and uh, John Laurinaitis says, Look, I don't know. I don't like what R-Truth did last week. It was unprofessional. And Miz is like, well, why don't you do something about it? And he's like, well, because you were kind of a dick to him first. Which was the basis of it. Uh, they show the footage of Miz beating the fuck out of Truth. And uh, uh, Johnny Ace basically says, I'll have people look out for Truth, but uh, pretty much you're on your own because you started it, essentially. And then uh, Miz walks out, and uh, as he walks away, our truth walks away, walks out, and he starts 
flapping his arms and quacking like a duck. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. No, I'm it's sorry. A, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> no, it, it's official. It's official. Our truth is the Eric Young of WWE. Yes. <laughs> Only it, there's enjoyable things, you know, without him around. But he yeah. does come in to make things just that much better. <laughs> yeah. On the other hand, though, I'm not really. Part of me just doesn't like the fact that he's gone. Face. Uh, well, it might be a thing where they have him feud as a face for a little while, and then once he's done with the Miz, he'll go back to being a heel. They can always do that. Eh. Yeah. Keep in mind, he's fucking crazy. They can make him do whatever he want, they want at this point. Yeah. <laughs> it's the benefit of being crazy. <laughs> so, uh, so um, we come back from the commercial, and... We get a video looking at the 1988 Royal Rumble, the first ever Royal Rumble, which was really not that fucking good. If you've ever watched it, I have. Um, it's kind of a clusterfuck and then some. But uh, no, no, no matter. It was just for a useless piece of trivia. It was won by Hacksaw Jim Duggan. So, yeah, there what you need to know about that. Yeah, Anyways, uh, mm. you, you can tell they're uh, definitely getting their uh, hype machine ready for uh, the Rumble because that's the only time they ever do this. Yeah. And of course, there's so, always uh, that one, you know, they're not going to mention. Hmm. Uh, you mean the one where he who shall not be named won? Who, yeah, Lance Storm? Where, uh... No, it's Yeah, Bob that Bob. guy. Yeah, that's true. Sure. Oh, they they should just they should just give all his title rings to Lance Storm. They should officially do that. <laughs> if anyone needs the rub. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we come back from commercial and our match is Wade Barrett versus Santino Morella, and uh, we see footage of Wade Barra. Uh, tossing Randy Orton down the steps. Uh, and Barrett says he doesn't care what anyone else's New Year's resolution about anyone's New Year, but it's always been already been a good 2012 for him because it's a year without Randy Orton. Ha <laughs> ha! He hasn't seen this movie before. Dumbass. <laughs> uh. And uh, Barrett says, you know, I'm looking forward to. Winning the Royal Rumble, God, I hope not. And then main eventing WrestleMania, I hope that happens. I, I really, I if that happens, I will fucking quit. I will tap out. I, I, I no, no, just no. <laughs> no, no, yeah, they're not so, giving it. Yeah, yeah, we know that's not going to fucking happen. <laughs> we we could probably go over who we think is going to win the Rumble this year later in the show, but uh. Yeah. The, the his, his opponent is Santino Morella, and do you really even have to ask who wins this one? It's a squash. Oh, I figured Santino would have won. It's a squash. I don't care if it's a squash, considering what happened on SmackDown. Then again, no, th- this match also... was a squash. What what happens later on SmackDown? That's completely different. No, 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 I just mean, yeah, this was a squash match, but at least they give Santino something later. Yeah. And we so, mentioned um, brand separation. Okay. That Barrett wins. We mentioned brand separation. I'll have um, more to say about that when we get to SmackDown. But yeah, Barrett mm-hmm. wins. Oh. Yeah. Barrett wins with his wins. And now we got backstage, and the Bella Twins are... Being the Bella Twins, you know, they're fighting with each other. The Miz comes up and goes, hey, have you guys seen our truth? And they're like, oh, no, but we've seen little Jimmy. And a Miz roars laughter because that's off. just so funny. Yeah. And Miz, also, Miz also says, you know what? I'm glad Alberto Del Rio got hurt, which I guess because the Bellas are like, I don't know, phoning him or something. That certainly seemed to have an effect. I don't is, know. God, is that what he said? I didn't even fucking hear him. Yeah. He's like, by the way, by the way, I'm glad Alberto Del Rio got hurt. And they're all like, oh! 
We suck his dick for a living. How dare you? Uh, could be why they keep keep him around. But uh, anyway, uh, he 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 hears so he leaves and he stops because he thinks he hears something. He's like. He walks off, and right after he does, our truth pops out again. And it's like, God damn it. This is going to be a comedy thing, isn't it? What's wrong with that? No, I mean, I just, I don't know. This has been a weird. (sighs) You think Miz should be doing something better? Yes. Yeah, that's true, but <sighs> I'll take what I can get. This is at this is at least a funny comedy bit that they're doing. I mean, oh yeah, it works. We have to give them that. But I'll admit, you know, I'll be happy. You know, I'm uh, I'm not going to be sad when it's over and Miz goes back to you know doing something other than getting his ass kicked. But for now, it's his time. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, uh, up next is Seamus versus Miz, and, uh, yeah. Uh, this isn't even, it's not, it's not even Seamus versus Miz, because it's not even a match. Uh, basically, Seamus comes out first, and then Miz comes out, and before the bell even rings, he just drops Seamus with the DDT, and basically, they just, like fucking brawl and brawl and brawl some more, and uh, Miz, being the chicken shit he is, he after he started the fight decides to go out the ring and try and run through the crowd. But guess who's there? It's our truth. Truth is at the top of the steps. He said, "You know what? While watching your match, I ran into little Jimmy. Little Jimmy says he don't like the Miz." the Miz, and he needs to get got. So, uh, Truth walks down the steps, and basically they fight. <laughs> well, Which no, Miz, 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 jump, Miz jumps back over the barrier and walks right into a brogue kick. Yeah. Then, then Seamus basically goes, meh, that'll do, and yep. walks away and I'm lets done. Miz get his ass kicked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then we just get our truth um, giving the mic to a little Jimmy in the audience, and this confused kid, all he has to say is "Happy New Year." He and you just know that this poor kid in Aww. his head—it sounded really, it sounded like a decent enough one-liner, and God bless him, he and tried. Now we are making fun of him on the internet. He tried. Uh, he, stupid he tried. kid. <laughs> Shut up, Chris. <laughs> so um, af- um, after this, uh, go backstage and Josh Matthews is talking with Ziggler and Guerrero and Vicky, and all saying, you know, I pinned Punk last week, and if you know, if you've got it, if, if you've got it, you gotta flaunt it. And nobody does, nobody flaunts it as well as I do. And everyone should keep their ticket stubs because, God darn it, they want to remember the night that they were there that I became WWE champion for the first time ever. But they also want to forget the time I was World Heavyweight Champion. That was like five minutes. (laughs) Well, it's still longer than big shows. Uh, Yeah. Not by much, but whatever. We'll... I'll actually have more to say about that in a little bit because we're about to get to that match. But next we have Zack Ryder backstage with Eve Torres. And because get, apparently they're together now. And speaking of world heavyweight title reigns we'd like to forget, here's Jack Swagger. <laughs> Swaggy. Eh, I don't... Uh, I don't even, oh, oh, actually, Duo, so you were ranting about this when we were talking about Impact last night, how... They never have a main event scheduled in advance. Well, this this is about the time when John Laurinaitis decides to book the main event. Yeah. I mean, at the very yeah. least, Impact has the decency to do it at the beginning of the show. Well, no, I think WWE doesn't make a habit of not having one. Yeah. No, um, I'll be honest. My problem with with 
the, the segment is they have a main event. Ziggler versus Punk. Nah. No. Yeah, that that really bothered me when I yeah. realized, Does, especially when I realized it was next. It's just like, yeah. really? This is it, this is going to be our middle of the night thing? Yeah, it doesn't involve Cena, so we can't make it the main event. <sighs> Which is sad, because the WWE Championship match between Dolph Ziggler and CM Punk, as you would expect, was fucking awesome. Do you? Yeah, it really was. Yeah, it was. Until we get to the end, which I'm going to talk about. Uh, here's here's the end of it. Punk is in the corner, and um, Ziggler goes for the zigzag, but Punk grabs a turnbuckle pad and manages to stop himself, but he accidentally rips the turnbuckle pad off. So they go back to brawling, and right as Punk's about to hit the GTS, Laurinaitis comes out and starts yelling at the referee, like, oh, oh the turnbuckle pad fell off. You're not doing your job. This isn't supposed to be like this. And he's getting up on the apron, and what happens is Ziggler goes to hit Punk behind his back, but he ducks out of the way and slams into Laurinaitis. And then and then Punk goes for the GTS again, but ends up getting thrown out of the ring, bouncing off the ropes, and Laurinaitis remembers, oh shit, I'm supposed to be holding down the ropes, and you see him frantically grab for them. Hmm. <laughs> and Punk falls out, and I guess he knocked his head, because th- th- you want to talk about fast counts. The referee started counting at six. Like, no joke. <laughs> it's like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, eight. and the whole time, as soon as I saw him counting with every number, all I could say was, no. <laughs> they fucking would. No. They and would. they did. And then, it's another match where no one can, it's another one of those matches. I hate when they fucking do this. When, we talked about it last night when, with TNA, where they have a match where they don't really want anyone to fucking lose. So they just have one of these finishes. They don't want anyone to lose. They don't want anyone to win by DQ or anything like that. So they have a count out. They'll, this count out makes more sense because of Punk's deal with Laurinaitis and how Johnny Ace is trying to screw him all the time. So I was okay with it on that front but still sometimes i just like can we have a winner and a fucking loser please yeah well this is where i got really confused is exactly that it was laurenitis coming out it's just like okay and they established already that you know that this is how we got here was laurenitis interfered uh with a match and that's how ziggler got number one contendership. Is this just going to be the thing? Is, like, every CM Punk match going to have Laurinaitis coming out being, you know, interrupting or distracting a ref? Really? I don't know. It's getting tiresome, but here's where I got really confused, because after they declare Ziggler the winner, he grabs the WWE title belt, and he's celebrating, like, woohoo, woohoo, I'm the champion, I did it, hooray me! And I, yeah, and I that- was like, Wait, I didn't watch Raw last week. Was this a stipulation that if Punk gets DQ'd, Ziggler wins the title? I was confused, too, because at first, just like, wait, no, they didn't, because I forget rules of things all the time. So I forgot that, yeah, count out counts as a disqualification, therefore no title change. And he runs off with it. It's like, wait, they didn't actually say a new champion. What the fuck is he doing? Well, who screwed up? Well, the, the what happens is we we have to wait till we come back from commercial. And Cole, he's celebrating. He's like, oh, Dolph Ziggler won. Dolph Ziggler's amazing. And then Lala gets on. Well, we have to clarify. This was a disqualification win, so he is not WWE champion. So I'm like, oh, Dolph Ziggler's just a fucking moron. Well, it's not even that. I mean, it makes sense. He stole the belt, and that's all good and fine. But when all CM Punk is doing a reaction is sitting there looking like he just lost the fucking thing. He he did. CM Punk looked like he'd lost the belt. He didn't try and stop him. He just... Yeah, he didn't say, hey, dickhead, give me my belt back. You know, he didn't try and send anybody to go get his belt back. He just kind of sat there looking really defeated. And it's like, what the fuck is going on? I mean, I guess we should have seen it coming and should have understand just because we've been watching long enough to not know this shit, but 
you know, sometimes we're not just we're not always going to be paying perfect attention and people who don't know this shit are going to be really fucking confused. Yeah. Well, I'm never a fan of when they do the angle of, oh, the heel stole the belt. <laughs> it's stupid. It, it makes it everyone is. it makes everyone in question look stupid because what's to stop yeah. the face, especially a guy like CM Punk who doesn't stand for this kind of crap, stop him from just kicking Ziggler's ass. What I don't understand is why they can have belts for any amount of time. Shouldn't security take it from them? Yeah, I mean, the WWE title belt, I assume that's a pricey amount of real estate. That that should... They probably shouldn't be allowing stuff like that to happen. I mean, I know kayfabe and everything, but still. Well, it's like, you know, Sam Punk stole the belt on his way out the door before he was re-signed, and that was a huge goddamn deal. He had the belt. Yeah. And no one could get it away from him. So it's a big deal if he takes it when he's no longer with the company, but if you're still with the company and you have to come to work the next week, well, we know where the belt is, yeah. so who cares? It's just, what? Mm. But well, moving along. Un- unfortunately, we haven't reached the absolute epitome of stupid with this angle just yet. Because in between what that is, we've got a Bella Twins match. Ah, so I like to, to put fair, forward emotion. I like to to be emotion. fair, this was placed perfectly. This did exactly what it should have done, and it was a nice cool down from that level of bullshit. Yeah, but on the other hand, it's the Bella Twins. I'd rather take a short match with with people I don't want to see wrestle than a short match with people I'd really like to see wrestle. Yeah. (sighs) If you're going to give me a bathroom break, it might as well be worth going. um, So, um, Bella Twins versus Kelly, Kelly and Eve Torres. Um, Bella's win... Nothing really exciting happens. Go figure. Am, am I the only one who's fucking sick of twin magic and how no one has figured this out yet? No, you're not the only one. figured it out once. It's just... The thing is, is that, okay, the refs are still falling for it. Fine, I'll take that. Refs are apparently... You put on, you put on the stripes and use, like, half your brain power. Fine, that's just wrestling. But, like, Kelly Kelly is distracting the ref. That's something I never understand, is how faces will honestly distract the ref and argue with them, thus giving heels time to do something. You think faces or anyone that wants to be sure to win would know, okay, the ref is telling me to stop doing something, he's not paying attention to the people who are in the ring, I need to back the fuck off so he can do his job and we don't get screwed. No, I'm... There you go, using logic again. Yeah, me and my logic. Yeah. Well, now we're going to get to the part that really pissed me off, and I'm a little upset that this hasn't pissed off anyone else, because we're backstage with David Otunga and John Laurinaitis, and CM Punk walks in, and he is mad. And Laurinaitis says... Well, basically, Punk's like, you interfered in my match for the second time in a week, and you almost cost me the title. And Lorna's is like, whoa, your problem's not with me. Your problem's with Dolph Ziggler. No, I'm going to give you a match at the Royal Rumble. And just to make sure nothing goes wrong, I'm going to be the special guest referee. Fuck. Fuck you, WWE. This is the, this is the exact same fucking thing you did with Dolph Ziggler last year it is the exact same angle you have a corrupt general manager who wants who has a grudge against the champion wants to get the belt off them so they're giving special treatment to Dolph Ziggler the only thing this is missing is to put CM Punk in a blonde wig this is fucking stupid it is lazy and I don't want to see it again I could put up with it last year, but the fact that they're doing it two years in a row just pisses me right the fuck off. Honestly, the only reason why I'm not upset about it is because I hadn't realized it. I wasn't... um, I got back into wrestling right at the end of that. 
As in yeah, quite I, yeah. literally until Vicky Guerrero it, being I, fired the end of it. Until you mentioned it, I, that hadn't even crossed my mind, which is Same here. sad. So obviously they can get away with it because, damn. Because none of us remembered it? Well, the probably the only reason I still remember it is because I actually followed that angle because I was actually in the crowd at that Royal Rumble and... I don't know. I it, no, you're right. That that, that's happy. really fucking lazy. It really is. You know, things get recycled, but you need to wait more than a fucking year. And at the same event, no less. God. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That's... Yeah, you're right. Wow. You've got to... Now I feel depressed. I know, it's just like, son of a bitch. <laughs> God damn Moving on. God. Well, we hey, want happy things. Yes, happy things. Like, what happens next? Because we get one more cryptic video of this It Begins thing. And all the lights go dark. And there's silence. And then, on top of the ring, there's someone... In a blinky coat. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know how else to describe that coat. It was blinking. It had blinky lights that. on it. And the I love the coat. It's ugly as sin, but I like it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> he is back. Y2J, Chris Jericho, makes his return to the WWE. Kind of quite possibly the weirdest fashion ever. <laughs> was better than the uh, endless hype that uh, his last return got. And uh, What, save us Y2J? Yeah, and then it was like, well, if they made it any more goddamn obvious. I mean, even this time it was like, as I'm sure we'll never hear the end of, you know, bef- it was kind of obvious, but it wasn't like, you know, well, I'm putting my dick in your face. Is it any more obvious yet? Uh, I was kind of, I, I remember saying this, but that I thought would be kind of disappointed if it was Jericho. I just, I wanted to be surprised and, like, have it not be someone we were completely and utterly fucking expecting. But there we have it. It was Chris Jericho, and, you know. Well, who else was it going to be? It's not that I'm sad Jericho's back. I just wish, you know, they had done something else. There's going to be Jericho or Taker. No, no, no. no, 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 honestly, no, Leaf. Who else was it going to be? Well, there were signs in the um, crowd that that people were clearly thinking it might be Austin. Okay. But that's the thing, is that there aren't that many people that could do a comeback right now, are there? The only ones I can think of are Undertaker still needs to come back, and we'll see him for WrestleMania. Jericho. Jericho, Austin, so, Rock, who isn't going to be showing up again anytime soon. Yeah, Kane just know. came back. <laughs> okay, okay. How I'm many just saying, people I'm do just... we have on a list that's just like, who the fuck actually has the ability to wrestle? I thought still? it was going to be Brock Lesnar because he dropped his fight like a bitch. Uh, could could have been. Um, At any rate. So, Jericho's, you know, he's really worked up. He comes, you know, he's, you can tell he's really loving being here. Being, being, you know, surrounded by all these fans just cheering their hearts out for him. Gets into the ring, and he's, you know, playing up to the crowd, and they're still going, yeah, woo, Jericho! And he gets out of the ring, and he starts, you know, slapping hands and talking to the fans, and they're like, yeah, Jericho! And he gets back into the ring, and the crowd starts chanting his name, like, Jericho! Jericho! They stop, and he, you know, is like, no, 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 keep going, keep going, keep going. And it's like, welcome back, welcome back, Jericho, Jericho. <coughs> and so he's all, you know, he's going to the corners. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm back, woo! It's like, yeah! And he goes back out, he gets back out to the fucking ring, and he gets a sign, and he gets back in the ring, and, you know, it's like, he's you can, he was milking the fuck out of this. He grabs a mic. 
And, you know, it's like, he's going to say something. He's going to say something. And he puts it down. <laughs> and he gets them to go get back to cheering. And the crowd start starting to go, do something, you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Before, See, that, you know, that's people, the thing. Oh, no, no, no. no, no, no. So, you can tell people in the audience were actually kind of starting to get fed up with this. Like, people were starting to boo. People were starting to yell, get on with it. <laughs> and, and that's kind of a shame because... Honestly, what the fuck was he supposed to say? I'm back. It's good to see, you know, it's good to be back. It's great that you guys still love me. There isn't really anything he could have said aside from if he had any plans to take someone out, if he wanted to start a feud then and there. There's nothing he could have said that wasn't fucking obvious. You don't always need to talk, and this really did work with no words. He was happy to be back. He was really psyched. The audience was fucking losing their minds. It worked. It probably went on longer than necessary, but I do think this worked. Even just sitting at home watching it, I couldn't help but get really excited and be really happy. That's how powerful that was. Yeah, so... But I don't you're... think that was really what he was trying to do. I think he was just trying to be, like... Like healing a dick. Honestly, I, I think I think the whole you know like going to talk and then not talking. He was having some fun. I don't think he was trying to be an asshole about it exactly. No, he trolled us. I think he was just having fun. Uh, have you been fun? I think I think it's part of a larger like gimmick. But have, have uh, you, uh, has it might be been following his Twitter though, because he's been getting tons of questions asking him, like, well, what was up with your promo? Or are you actually back in the WWE? And he just keeps saying, no, no, I'm not back in WWE. What makes you think I'm back? He's fucking with us. See, that is, yeah, he's fucking with us. And you know what? More power to him. Cause it's hilarious. <laughs> I think he's going to be, a, I think he's going to be a heel again. Yeah, but um, uh, I, I, he might. I think I think him and Vince had a bet, and Vince was like, "Hey, Chris, I bet you can't go out there on TV. You you know you're gonna get a face pop. I bet you can't go out on TV and make people hate you in less than two minutes. Okay, <laughs> we'll see. Well, that was not two goddamn <laughs> minutes. Well, less than ten minutes. Yeah, that's closer. <laughs> so, um. The segment ends with Jericho. He goes back out to the ring side and he's like, yeah, yeah, woo. And then he goes up the ramp. And he's like, yeah, woo. Bye, everybody. <laughs> uh, yeah, and honestly, I kind of this. wish he'd had a mic, just picked it up and went, K-Tex, bye, and then just left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you could just literally... That would have been perfect. <laughs> you could feel the crowd going, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like, really... Oh, God. They, they were confused. They were really happy and they were cheering. And I did hear boos. Some people did start booing, especially when he left, when he disappeared into the back. The boos really kicked in. They're like, wait. But there were still back, so right? many people going, hey, yeah, he's back. I, I think I'm so happy, but so confused. What the fuck just happened? It was glorious. My brain hurts. I wish I could have been there. <laughs> yeah, so, um,. Cole and Lawler, they hype up the main event, which we never did mention what it was. It's an elimination match between uh, Zack Ryder, uh, The Big Show, and, uh, and John Cena, fuck, versus Mark Henry, The Kane, and Jack Swagger. Except, well, as we'll find out... Um, Ryder's Big Show and Cena come out, and Henry and Swagger, they, they come out too, and Kane's music hits, and no Kane. And his music hits again, and no Kane. And out comes Odunga running like a doofus in a... Bow tie. Doofus in a bow tie. <laughs> and he gets in the ring to talk to the to the ref. And the ref's, the ref's like, uh, uh, Kane's not going to be participating in this match after all, so um, it's a handicap match. Go fix. Because, diva on. because apparently in the WWE, you can just say, I'm not competing. I'm not going to do my job tonight. Fuck y'all. <laughs> you didn't that know, know that. He's scary. That's, that's totally in your standard WWE contract. 
you have the ability to just not show up and not do what you're paid to do. It's why everyone wants to be in the WWE. I kind of wish they had just replaced Kane with Otunga. Just so he could get punched again. <laughs> See, that's what I kind of thought was going to happen when he came running down. It's just like, no way. Oh, Bait man. <laughs> But, um, so Swagger and Cena, they lock up, and, uh, blah, 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 Swagger takes in Henry, they go to commercial, they come back, Swagger's back in the ring. Fuck. Uh, the match you was them, we have We have to pimp them. <laughs> uh, big, big Show gets taken out somehow. Or no, what happens? Big Show and Henry. Yeah, what happens is Mark Henry goes to get a chair. Big Show punches it out of its hand. And then decides to use the chair about Hen- against Henry. And this gets them both disqualified, so they're both eliminated. Because we had to get Henry out of there as quick as possible because he's still injured. If they keep booking him and shit. Maybe yeah. they're afraid that, you know, if he's not on air, they- everything could be ruined. Because, you know, he's just going so strong. He is? Sure. It's, Whatever um, the WWE wants to tell themselves. <laughs> and Whatever helps dimensions. the writers and the people booking sleep at night. So, um, it comes down to writer, writer and Cena versus Swagger. Uh, surprise, surprise, Swagger loses. <laughs> and, uh, so Ryder and Cena win, and they're, they're in the ring celebrating, you know, like, woo, woo, woo. And all of a sudden, Kane's music hits. And Cena's like, Holy shit, Kane's gonna come down that ramp. When the fuck does Kane ever come down the goddamn ramp when his music hits <laughs> like this? <laughs> so Cena's like, Dirt, he's gonna come over there. And he gets out of the ring and goes up the ramp to, you know, he's ready to fight Kane. And Kane busts out of the fucking ring. Like, he rips this- his way through the fucking ring floor like a goddamn demon out of hell, which he is. Any character wise, <laughs> well, he takes out Ryder and he goes after he meet he gets out of the ring and attacks Cena and he does this whatever the fuck he's he's doing now where he's like he grabs him by the face and is like Meh. he's suffocating them yeah he's basically putting his hand over your mouth and nose but whatever the, the <laughs> end of this is he goes back in the ring and he's like oh Zack Ryder's gonna get it so in the most goofiest way possible he grabs Zack Ryder by the leg and starts trying to drag him into the hole that is now in the middle of the ring and, and in true fashion Cena jumps back in and grabs Ryder's arm before he gets pulled under and pulls him out just as and... the ring explodes into a ball of flames it was, by a small sorry, puff this of, uh, was glorious. This, this was glorious in its cartoonish silliness. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, yeah, it's just like, you know, fucking subtle. Kane's dragging him to hell. Although, I, I guess this does... Although, credit to the announcers, they refer to it as the abyss. <laughs> Although, I guess... I guess this, fucking hell. Just, just think this. This probably <laughs> would count as an attempted murder because technically Kane tried to make Zack Ryder explode. Well, yeah, that, that was kind of my thought. Is that in a much darker thing, like if this was like a show of some kind, I could just imagine Zack Ryder getting dragged down, and this is how they killed him off. <laughs> <laughs> I think the important thing we need to realize. Kane's Screaming, and then it would have been really quiet. I think the thing we really need to realize with this... Sorry, uh, you're okay. Uh, The thing we need to realize... Okay. Who's gonna talk? The thing we need to realize about this is... Kane has apparently... Or Kane? If hell's under the ring, then that means little people's court was hell. Are you surprised? <laughs> Not really, but still, it's just great to re- realize it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it, or, the other thing you have to, it might be is Kane has burnt Little People's Court down because, you know, flattening it and all the other goddamn stuff that happens under that ring has it, or if it hasn't already done that, then this might have done it. And it Maybe. happened on Raw instead of a pay-per-view. Hmm. 
Maybe it's like the door in Hell's Moving Castle. I'm going to assume I'm the only one who's actually seen that fucking movie. There's a door, and if you turn the dial on it, it will end up opening to different places, like almost different dimensions, but it's just different places around the around the world. Maybe it's like that. Under the Ring is fucking magic. So there's Little People's Court, there's Hell, and then there's the area where all the crap under the ring, the ladders and the kendo sticks and what have you. It's like three separate dimensions, and you can just set it to what you need it. Hmm. Yeah, I think we're overthinking it. Yeah, we're, that also makes sense. Thinking, there's nothing fucking down there. Well, but... we're nerds. We think about this stuff. We it's... will have an explanation. I swear, <laughs> it's not sad. Oh, it, it's incredibly sad, but we're going to run with it anyways. I've never let being pathetic stop me. Okay. Uh, I, I guess that's it for Raw. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, we're we're talking talking about 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 yeah, there's SmackDown <laughs> still, which is uh, less exciting. I, I really don't know how nobody's to Nobody's dragged into hell. <laughs> yeah, nobody's dragged into hell. I don't think they're going to top that. But we we it, we pretty much we we start with a yeah, match. No. Well, well, there is a recap of what happened to Randy Orton, and Jesus Christ, the music that they were playing in the background of these promos, it sounded like Jesus had died. <laughs> yeah, I know they're they're really they're really trying to turn this into a tear jerking kind of moment. We saw the Randy man running Orton down the Orton. stairs. <laughs> I know this has happened a zillion times before, but this time was for super serial, you guys. <laughs> but yeah, our first Seriously, match. Someone gets thrown down the stairs like once a fucking month. But, uh, mm, they spread it a little better than that. Yeah, but but we go into our first match, which is Cody Rhodes versus Booker T for the Intercontinental Title. This is. Uh... I don't want to say it's bad, but it wasn't exactly very good. The The match didn't have a lot of flow to it, and mostly because Booker T did, was not looking good. Um, it looked like I, I, it looked like they were calling a lot of it in the ring. Um, there were a lot of those moments where you see uh, like them go back into a corner and it looks like they're whispering in, in uh, or calling a spot in each other's ear or something like that. So I think that's part of what was kind of awkward about it was that, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't called on the fly. It was, I mean, it was called on the fly and it probably didn't work in the match's favor that it was called on the, on the fly. Cause it looked like there were times when Cody was calling it. And then there were times when Booker was calling it and it just looked awkward. Hmm. Yeah. Mm. At any rate, I, I liked the match. Mm. Um, I didn't. Oh, I didn't really have a problem with it. I didn't really think. Of, I didn't really think it was like not good. I thought it was a fine match, but I, I'll agree that there were some uh, awkward moments. Yeah, I I don't have much of an opinion. <laughs> mm. Eh. Yeah, this this match happened. Cody wins, of course, because they're not putting the belt on Booker. No, this it would have been. Well, I was about to say it would have been interesting if they did, but no. Yeah. Would have been fucking stupid. Yeah, it would it would be like putting the belt on Lawler at uh, the Royal Rumble or something. <laughs> Anyways, a- after that, we we uh, get a segment backstage of. Uh, of uh, Cody Rhodes talking to Curly from the Street Stooges. I mean Dustin Rhodes. Excuse me, people. I get those two confused. <laughs> Leave Gold Dust alone. He looks like Curly without the makeup. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. No, he doesn't. He just looks like Gold Dust without the makeup. Don't you humor him. I've never seen him without the makeup. This was fucking weird. I know. And it was all I could think about. I I I just want to see him go. I hope that some of gets less shit over time. That was uncalled for. I don't care. Gold dust is not amused. 
The only reason why I'm not amused is they're making a Three Stooges movie, and I'm sad. Uh, so yeah. anything well, that reminds well, well, me that, we'll sit about sad. that. that. Mm. But the the whole point of this is that Cody's trying to get himself over as a heel by basically burying Goldust and even burying his father in the process. That, oh, I think that was just the step too far. It's just like, eh. Cody, I like... You're not better than your dad yet. I like you and everything. <laughs> I don't think you're ever going to be as good as your dad was because he was something special. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the weird thing when these uh, second generation guys come in and talk about how they're going to be better than their father. It, it's always kind of that situation where it's like, do you understand how fucking, like, even in kayfabe terms, you understand how fucking good your parent was? Like. That said, though, it's entirely possible. You know, who, well, maybe not for Cody, I don't know. But it's possible to become better than your parents. It just sort of depends. Yeah, but that's that's something to be decided to be decided at the Hall of Fame. Just if everybody makes it, I don't know. That's it's definitely not something that they should be saying outright. Yeah. Mostly because that's the kind of thing that one will end up being somewhat subjective, and two, it as some wrestlers Hulk Hogan have proven, uh, sometimes it's more important about how famous you are. Yeah. But uh, we, we move on from this to Zack Ryder in Teddy Long's office. And uh, basically basically he says that he he was glad to be assistant to Teddy Long, but because he's United States champion, he can't do it anymore. But he's found a replacement. And then we get... Teddy. It's Drew McIntyre. Yes, Drew <laughs> McIntyre is back again. And... Oh, this is going to get depressing because Teddy Long is like, oh, you got this guy playing? <laughs> and Zach's yeah, like, oh, are you fucking it, kidding me? No, 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 no. I have this guy. And then walks in. Oh. Oh. That's kind of sad when Zack Ryder is just all like, that Yahoo? No. <laughs> no, I got Santino. this Yahoo. It's just like, this oh, guy is ow. even less of a joke. He's not a comedy character. Yeah, yeah. and it basically boils down to, uh, hey, Teddy, weren't you going to fire him if he lost last week? And Drew's like, shut up! Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. And he's old, he might forget. Teddy tells Drew that he's basically got, um, he's, he's getting a second shot, but if he blows it again, he's on really thin ice. And he makes a match of Santino Morella versus Drew McIntyre. If Santino wins, he gets to be Teddy's new assistant. And Drew says, well, what do I get if I win? And Teddy's like, uh, you don't get canned. It's basically a job on a pole match, but two separate jobs and no pole. So, um, they, uh, suddenly... Exana makes her her required appearance, and nobody cares. <laughs> what is the fucking point of this woman? I don't think DNA. Like, when, she, when she first started showing up, it's just like, oh, okay, they have a new diva, whatever. No, she just sort of shows up with seductive music, and it's just like, this is the most pointless fucking character I've ever seen. Either do some things, you know, wrestling wrestling related with her, or she can leave. She's she's attracted to old. Let her manage somebody, head. Christ. Apparently, she it. likes older men. I guess I. Uh, your guess is it's as good as mine. Really you really what you're doing you're trying to this. It's 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 a really weird angle. You would think it'd be over by now. Like we would have known. Like what the point of it is, but I think mainly it's just an excuse to have Oxana on TV without ha- her having to wrestle. It's, it's There has to be a resolution eventually. Put her in the ring. Maybe uh. make her a manager. Love her. Fuck daddy. Daddy. Something. 
You would think that, but you know, WWE is not the smartest cookie thing. They're not the sharpest tools in the cookie jar, if you get what I mean. Yes, I realize I said it wrong. You said that all kinds are wrong. <laughs> yes, I realize I said it wrong. That's the joke. It, it's not a good joke. It's a good joke to me. Okay, fine. Moving on. Uh, what's next? Uh, oh, we get um, a recap of the 2008 Royal Rumble, and that's the Royal Rumble that Cena won after his triumphant return from whatever injury he had sustained in 2007. You had a broken fucking neck. I wasn't watching in 2007, so I don't know. Mm. Also, I don't care. I remember this one because uh, 2007 was. Um... 2007, I think that was the year of his 14 month title reign. Yeah, so it was somebody else. Um, so 2008 was uh, when Cena won it. Um, point is, there's a, there's a lot of filler on this SmackDown, I'm noticing. Yeah, like this that. was. They had a ton of filler. So, um, <laughs> we'll come back to Angel to Lisa Fox. Let's go in. Ah! Sorry. I'm just making a lot of bad jokes tonight. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh,. <laughs> Uh, it's Alicia Fox and AJ Lee. They're talking backstage. Alicia asks how New Year's went, and AJ's like, well, things were great for me and Daniel, and he's the quite a sensitive type, but I'm kind of worried about his match with with Big Show. And Alicia's like, well, I hope your boyfriend's ego can handle being, can handle a loss. And Daniel comes in and goes, hey, um, we can talk about my ego, because I've been in the Big Show. And Nobody seems to have the heart to tell him, yeah, but he was already knocked out. You didn't really beat him. <laughs> yeah, you just sort of, like, jumped on top of him when he was already unconscious. Yeah, and um, so Alicia leaves, and Brian asks AJ, why the fuck are you friends with her? <laughs> uh, yeah, th- this is, is... Bas- it's basically a signal they're turning Brian heel. I like yeah. it. I. I guess I'm alone. Uh, I don't know. We'll see what he's actually heal, but it. I guess I'm just not too crazy about the idea of it just being, the fame going to his head, or the power, or however you would describe having a title belt. Yeah, and um. So after that, we hear from the fucking Wendy's girl Ugh. and how he lo- about being uh, about him insulting Hornswoggle, and that leads into our next match. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> oh, this was so so sad. You remember once upon a time when I was actually a Heath Slater apologist? What the hell was no. I thinking? I don't know, but I hope that Man, whatever, psychology, whatever psychiatrist you went to really helped you out. <laughs> Good God. This so it's it's, it's an off the top rope battle uh, between Hornswoggle and Heath Slater. And Hornswoggle wins. I don't, <laughs> know how. I don't pretend to understand the physics behind it, but he won. It's not that hard to understand. He was standing firmly on the apron and he yanked him out by his fucking hair. It's a leverage thing. Now, honestly, it was fake and I'm sure Slater helped, but it's plausible. Yeah, but it's a horn walk away. And uh, immediately afterwards, Slater gets back in the ring and just starts kicking the shit out of Hornswoggle. So, you know, immediately Slater becomes the, you know, fucking face of this feud. And uh, this is ruined by the cur- obviously dastardly heel, Justin Gabriel, who comes out and he beats up Slater and hits him with the 450. And yeah, that was, it was actually a pretty, from what I remember, um, it was actually a pretty decent leap he did on that 450, dude. 
because of where Slater was laying. So it looked like he was better. out there a bit. He's getting better. Yeah, but Gabriel and Hornswoggle celebrate, you know, their dastardly evil tactics. And uh, we got backstage to Hunico telling Teddy that, uh, or telling uh, Ted DiBiase that, you know, he hears, um, oh, shit, sorry. Uh, this is actually going into the next match. Whoops. That was a big bloody off. Um, someone else go. I'm going to shut up. Where are we? I'm confused and scared. Uh, okay. This is for okay. the DiBiase Hunico match. Yeah, the next match is Ted DiBiase with Hunico, who is accompanied, according to the set I'm reading results from, is accompanied by Camacho and the bicycle. The bicycle is a character, apparently. Well, no, Sorry, I would imagine that that mention. is our. That would be the writer's kind of subtle jab at the fact that they would not shut up about this lowrider bicycle. Like, How can they, I... it was cultural learning time in the WWE. If the How... bike had a dick, it would have been sucked. How, How can a bicycle <laughs> even be a lowrider? Because from my understanding, a lowrider is a car with hydraulics on it that is able to ride lower to the ground. But... The, the bike, the bike rides low to the ground. That's why they call it a low rider. Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's designed stupid. to be a low rider. But you know, they were giving cultural, they were explaining the origin of this type of bicycle. And it's just like, who gives a shit? It doesn't make it any less racist, WWE. It really doesn't. Oh God. no! Like I, I came back and we were in the chat, and I was like, is this offensive to anybody else? Like. I, 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 I try to, like, remember that it's just WWE and it's just fucking wrestling and it's silly and stupid and they do... I, I fucking hate when they do ethnic gimmicks because they just don't know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah, the thing is, having them come out on the bike, eh, fine, whatever, if you want to go that way. Cutting a promo. Talking about it constantly throughout the, you know... Throughout, almost through the match, they were talking about this fucking bike, going into you know how such bikes came to be and how it was because you know some people and God, they might have even said the fucking barrio, talking about how you know like uh, some people didn't couldn't afford the lowrider car, so they made lowrider bicycles. Like, I don't need a fucking cultural lesson. And it's all negated by the fact that they have these these fucking guys go out and do extremely racist shit, and Camacho, for all intents and purposes that we know, isn't even fucking Hispanic. Congratulations, WWE. You are now fucking worse than TNA, because they may have made a stable bull of Mexicans who aren't actually Mexicans, but at least they're all Hispanic. Fucking dicks. God. At any rate. I think at this point everyone's been pissed off tonight. Yeah, I'm angered out. I don't care. <laughs> <sighs> I'm okay. Yeah. Hunico wins. Move on. Match mm-hmm. is not that great. It's whatever. It happened. It <sighs> dunk. Um, we go backstage and Wade Bear's talking to the medical staff and we can't hear what he's saying. I think probably for the best. So we go to commercial. Come back and Barrett's in the ring. And, or Barrett brings the barrage. Barrett's in the ring. And he's talking about how, you know, he told the doctors they're not bother coming out because, you know what? He'll handle the medical update for an uh, order tonight. And he basically goes, nah, loser. <laughs> he's, he, he's retired forever. I win. And, Seriously, has he not seen this movie before? Apparently not. I mean, no. the rest of us know how this ends, right? Yeah, no, yeah. no, no. He, he's been too busy playing Call of Duty. Oh, okay, <laughs> that explains it. Um, Barrett mentions that, you know, 
in less than four weeks. The Rumble's going to be in Orton's hometown, and it's ironic because the hometown hero could have eliminated 29 other people to get into the main event, but instead he'll have to sit sit there with the rest of the PBNs and watch Barrett do it because there's nobody who can beat him. And Sheamus comes out. That's not ironic. That's a coincidence or sad. Nobody said Barrett was smart. So no. Seamus comes out and he's like, hey, fella, what's cracking? You know, you remind me of my great uncle Wilfred. This is not a very good Irish accent, is it? <laughs> no. It's better, than, oh. it's better than anyone I could do. So. Yeah. Tough canookies. So he's like, Uncle Wilfred loved the sound of his own voice and talking about the fights he won. But he said, Wilfred, he was a simple sheep herder. It was all a fantasy. Just like Barrett. Or just like you, Barrett, thinking that you're going to win the Royal Rumble with no problems, fella. And I'm going to be the biggest problem you've got because I'll kick your ass, I tell you what. Am I the only one who thinks it's kind of fucked up that we bitch about racism and then we have, you know, <laughs> really bad Irish accents? <laughs> <laughs> Why do we so have do Jordan Fleck accents to repeat what they fucking say, really? <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, anyway, Seamus is like, look, my Uncle Wilford, he was kicked in the head. That was Wilford's excuse. What the fuck is yours? <laughs> well, this gets and well, this gets stupid because... Who comes out next but Jinder Mahal? Uh, 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 why are they still putting this man on TV? Speaking of racism, speaking of further racism. Yeah, when did he start wearing a turban to the ring? Like, the music was bad enough, but now he's just coming out in a turban. What the fuck? The only explanation I have is that actually at one point when you get a close-up of him, it looks like he has like really bad burn on the side of his head. I think they just... I don't know if anyone's ever... Obviously, that's not what it's hiding because he takes the fucking thing off, but did anyone else notice that? That it looks like he has a really bad like something on the side of his head. It's like a rash or a burn or something. It was like bright fucking red. I don't think it's anything like that. I think they just want to fucking have him wear a turban. Yes, because the music and the coat, you know, that was just way too subtle. Yeah. India! (laughs) So, yeah, it turns into everybody beats up Seamus. Actually, yeah, it uh, comes out of this. It's something they're going to start hyping for next week. Jinder Mahal versus Sheamus, because, you know, we really need to know that that's going to happen. Yeah, I'm no so one likes, no one, I, 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 I don't get why they're pushing Jinder. He, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand. He, he's not interesting. He's not good in the ring. Uh, I, th- I, I very rarely like it when WWE brings someone up and buries them. But in this case, I was completely fine with it. Hmm. And I was like, yeah, you don't want to appear that guy. Sure, be my guest. You know what? I'd almost be okay with them wanting to hype this if only this match hasn't happened three other times already. I just broke your minds, didn't I? Yeah, I was not aware of that. What the fuck? Other times? They've wrestled at least three times before. I thought it was DBRC, but Oh, God. Jinder Mahal's matches are just blending together into a massive suck. Is that at all surprising? No, but it's still happening. It's scary. <laughs> uh, I just so, want it to be better. Uh, I'm done talking about SmackDown. SmackDown didn't no. to me. Oh, God. All right. Next match. We're San- almost there. Santino Marola versus Drew McIntyre. It actually this doesn't happened. end the way you think it's going to win. I know. It's, it was actually a... It was still really short, but it could have been a lot shorter. It could have also been a lot longer. Yeah, it, it's it's funny. The only noteworthy thing is that Santino wins with the Cobra, but McIntyre sells it like he took a taser to the spine. <laughs> 
Like, I know it's supposed to be like a move that stuns you, but damn, I think Shawn Michaels from SummerSlam 2005 would tell you to tone it down. <laughs> So, yeah, Santino wins. He's now the new assistant of to Teddy Long, and Drew McIntyre is kind of screwed. He goes yeah. back. And, um, isn't this the segment where he goes into the back and just starts screaming at Teddy Long, please, Teddy, please don't fire me, Teddy. I know it I doesn't need to go. Like a living hell. Don't fire me. You can't, do this. you can't do this to me, Teddy. Uh, I should be Teddy able basically We're not goes, being racist. Whoa. They have accents. Uh, I should you be able to do a Scottish accent. Do... I am Scottish, goddammit. It doesn't work oh. that way. And my last so. name is Irish, so there. Man. Uh, Teddy basically <sighs> tells Drew, look, you've lost twice now. I signed you to a big effing contract. You ship up, you shape up. Or if you lose next week, your ass is gone. Like, period. No more, no more, oh, you get one more chance. No, this is your last, last chance. Don't fuck up next week. And Santino comes in, he's like, Teddy, Teddy, I'm so happy I get to be your manager. Air trumpet, do, 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 do. And, uh, shit happens. There's a, Rosa mentions uh, there's a thing on Rosa, and uh, I don't care. Next match is Epico and Primo against Evan Bourne and Kofi Kingston. Rosa is hot. That's all you need to know. God damn. damn that woman cannot stop moving her hips. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, so we're racist and sexist tonight. That's great. <laughs> what? Awesome night for I didn't dark tell, match. I didn't tell her to do that. You talk. You talk to whoever's booking this shit about that. I'm just trying to enjoy. She is a very lovely young lady. Though I must tell my girlfriend said that. I must say this: this right. music that they have for Epico and Primo is just the most generic Latin music they could have found. They could have. But Rosa is hot. Eh, good point. Anyways, this was a this was a damn good match, if only because all four guys involved are very talented. Although we were actually having an interesting discussion uh, about Evan Bourne during this match, uh, th- that he is pretty much on his way to being the next Paul London. That's sad. Yeah, for the, for those of you not aware, Paul London was employed with the WWE, uh, I think from like two thousand five to what, 2008? Something around, like that. Around that time, and the man was very mistreated beyond his initial run, uh, his ta- beyond his tag team with Brian Kendrick, and to this day has still not truly gotten back his passion for the business because of the way things went in WWE, and I really do not want that to happen to Evan Bourne. Well, apparently Stephanie likes him, so that's something. Mm. Um, yeah, so, uh-huh. It's a, it was actually a pretty decent match. I mean, there's not much else really to say. It's probably, I think it's probably safe to say that this was match of the night, or would that go to something else? Just because of... It well, what other days. matches would there have been? Well, uh, we got... How many more matches? Damn, there's a lot two of matches. More. Yeah, there's two more. Damn, there were a lot of matches, but a whole lot of nothing matches. Yeah, bro. Really, yeah. Um, we we so, keep talking about this show, and I'm like, I watched this, and I realized shit happened, but nothing I, happened. Yeah, I think it was this long. Yeah, it was just a lot of fucking filler. Yeah. Um, even the matches, even the good matches, it's just like, it happened. Yeah. Mm. Anyways, mm-hmm. uh, um, Epico and Primo win after Evan Bourne misses the shooting star press. Uh, we we go back to Matt Stryker, who's um, interviewing the big show, and they're, and they're talking about the match. And uh, Brian enters and says that, you know, I'm a good wrestler. And 
and you act like it isn't some that isn't something to be proud of. And I've worked my entire life to be a great wrestler, and he's like, I'm, I'm not a freak like you. I'm not a freak like you. If I had your size and your strength and your skills, it. If I no, I think it's like if I had your size and my skills, it wouldn't have been nine years between my world championships, between a, between my championships. Just saying. And she was like, "Yeah." Being such a dick, and I love it. I, I think <laughs> I really is being a dick. I, I think I've given all the shits I'm going to give for this show. <laughs> yeah. She was like, and yeah, D- George just puts his hand on. Being a dick is somewhat interesting. I just wish he could have stayed face because I want to cheer for him. I, I, that might be part of my problem, but it also might be is that I don't know if it works for him that well. It really does just come off as I don't know. It just doesn't seem to work for me. I think it's because I. I I always thought that, like, I don't like Daniel Bryan the face. I think he's a good, like, blue chipper guy. But I always kind of felt like he would be better as heel. He was a good heel in the indies. And I always thought he would be better as a heel than he ever could be as a face, particularly in the WWE because, well, faces in the WWE are fucking boring. The heels are the interesting characters, and... The faces, for the most part, are all white hats who aren't that fucking interesting. So, to me, it was always a thing where I kind of wanted him to turn heel. It was just a matter of what kind of heel they would turn him into. If they would, to excuse the phrase, turn him into, like, a Benoit-ish kind of heel. But I I, I like that they're doing this with him, that he... One wins the World Heavyweight Championship, and he's supposed to be all grateful and all this stuff, but winning the championship has clearly just gone to his fucking head. And I, I kind of like that he's being a dick like that, and maybe I'm just a weirdo, but... No, because the, the idea of the tie of winning after you know after so long, especially you know when a lot of people wouldn't have believed this could ever happen. I like the idea of you know a face being slowly corrupted. It's just for some reason the process isn't clicking with me. When he does turn heel, and he's going to turn heel, they're not being subtle about it. You know, when he does turn heel, it might work really well, but so far the journey's just not working for me. That's understandable. I'm also kind of coming into it very suddenly, so I might warm up to it. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Mm-hmm. So, moving along, Diva's match. Oh, God, there's another match? Yeah, moving along. Natalia versus Tamina. Tamina wins. Next. <laughs> Pretty much. That's all there <laughs> is to rebound. say. There's nothing to this match, except that Tamina won. And yeah, we've they're... already talked at length about how Natalia is being treated. No need to rehash that. So let's just get on to the main event, because there there's a raw rebound, but no need to talk about that. First, we we start with Mark Henry. Recap with a recap. We start with Mark Henry coming out to the commentators' table uh, because that'll be interesting to hear. And this is our main event: Big Show versus Daniel Bryan for the World Heavyweight Title. Raw. This is what you do. You have your big important title match as the main event. What, nothing? See, what you're saying makes too much sense, Backlash. <sighs> but this is the company it, it, that it, sometimes it, it, tries to. Be honest, to... It's, they 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 do have they do do that for a reason to, you know, they need to spike the ten o'clock hour rating somehow. So that's why they do it. You know? So there there is a method to that kind of madness ish. It's so stupid. Oh yeah. 
Uh-huh. Most things done in the name of ratings are really fucking stupid. <laughs> What's oh, the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, this is a pretty. It was a. Uh, it was an okay. It was actually an okay match. I mean, you know, wasn't expecting. Um, I was, ex- you know, you you're not really expecting, you know, a te- technical masterpiece, but um, at one point, Brian gets uh show into the um uh, into the bell lock. It's like, hmm, because that's one of those things that I don't think he ever really saw. Um, he who must not be mentioned, uh, ever do was get a you know the, a big guy into the the cross face. So uh, he he did it a couple times on show and Kane yeah. and stuff. And really, Big Show just kind of throws him off with one arm and gets right back up. So he barely sold it. He sold it for a bit and he got out of it. Yeah, That was mildly annoying. The thing is, I really like the psychology of this match. You know, the fact that Brian goes in just being like, I can fucking take him. I did it before. How do you think I got this belt? I got this in the bag. And every time, there was at least two times where he's on his ass outside the ring going, Oh God! Oh God! What have I done? (laughs) What have I gotten myself into? I'm screwed! I love that. That is the one thing about his heel turn, the way they have him turning heel that I love, is that they had that moment where he honestly realizes that, yeah, his ego is getting bigger than he is. Uh, and I love that. It's just like, yes, you are doomed, little man. Think quick. Yeah. You are doomed. And honestly, doomed. his solution was fucking brilliant. Yeah, because uh, Henry goes over to um, gets him, uh, or Brian gets up. And he, Henry's sitting at the te- announce table. Going, oh, Get oh, back on the actually, ring. actually, it's it's yeah, it's worth noting that Mark Henry has been shouting at Daniel Bryan anytime he ducked out of the ring. It's like, Get back in the ring. Yeah, making comments about how what I think Brian rolled out of the ring to get away from a, a sh- get away from Big Show to dodge something, and Henry's just like, "See, I'd never do that. I wouldn't roll out of the way, and that's why you lost because you're too stupid to know when you have to move. <laughs> too stupid <laughs> to dodge. Why did you dodge? Oh." Um, We're gonna get sued. <laughs> yeah, so um, Henry's like, get back in the ring, bitch. And Brian goes, make me asshole. So Henry pushes the uh, show or pushes Brian over. He gets up, and Brian looks at the ref and goes, "Hello, <laughs> you saw Brian this, right?" The ref is just like, "Ref, yeah. dude, dude, you know." Uh-huh. And the ref's just like, "Son uh, of a bitch, a yeah, ring the fucking bell." The, the ref looks so put out. It's just like, really. I got a DQ because he shoved you a little. Fine. Rules so, are rules. Um, Rings fucking so. against the rules, but man, you're acting like a bitch. <laughs> just like really, we have so much better DQs in this business. <laughs> <laughs> Can't he hate you with something first? <laughs> yeah. So um. Anyway, show's pissed off, and Brian's like, "Yeah, I retained my title." Woo! And the crowd's like. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah, you retained your You're title. You're turning into a bag, and that was stupid. Uh. <laughs> but, um, that's pretty much SmackDown. Um, yeah, I think we can see Big Show Henry match at some point. A Big this. Show versus Daniel Bryan versus uh, Mark Henry. It's coming. Yeah. Oh, and you that. know what? The reason I, I, I kind of view him as Miz 2.0 is because Henry and Show are just going to be feuding with each other. It'll be like a triple threat match. They're just going to be feuding with each other, and Daniel Bryan's going to be trying so hard to get involved, and they're just going to ignore the fuck out of him. Yeah. So, um, I, I think I think we're pretty much done here. Let's just move into what gets more screen time than John Morrison, and I'll start. The blatant fire extinguishers to put out the fire when Kane blew up the ring got more screen time than John Morrison. Mm. The, the, the blatant set. racism got more screen time than than John Morrison. Deadly, deadly stares got more screen time than John Morrison. 
Uh, filler. Filler. <laughs> filler got more screen time than John Morrison. <laughs> yeah, that I. <laughs> All right, that will do it for now. This has been the dark match uh, for all of us here. I am your foxy friend, Backlash. I'm Duo's Angel. I'm Lone Warrior. And I am No Leaf Clover. Good night and good luck. Good night.